This is Tyler Faulkner with Carlson Software, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to import a scan of some underground mine workings. We're going to clean that scan up just a little bit. We'll create a solid of the scan, as shown on screen, and then finally we're going to calculate the volume of that solid. So the final product is shown here, but I just want to get an idea of what we're working towards. So you can see we've got the solid in there. But for the purpose of the video, I'm going to actually erase this. And we're going to start from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is import the scan. So we can't import millions and millions of points into AutoCAD or IntelliCAD. It's just not set up to handle that much data. So instead, I'm going to use the Carlson Point Cloud module. That module shown here with a little lightning bolt on the Carlson Menus toolbar. So I'm going to click on that, and that will immediately open up my Point Cloud Manager. And the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to create a new project. Just keep an eye on where you're saving this. And I'm going to call this project Underground Scan. Save that, yes. And it's a totally empty project. We do have a few categories, but these are all going to be empty. So here, I'm going to import my scan. And you can see these scans could come in a variety of formats. These could come from one of the Carlson laser scanning pieces of hardware. Could come from some third-party scanner. Uh, just any format you see here. This particular set of data is coming from a LiDAR scan. Pick my scan there. It's about 600, about 700 megabytes. Open that up. And before it imports it, it just gives you a few options in case you want to clean some things out. You can see this scan has about 27 million points. We could convert that to a different unit. I've already got it in the units that I need. And we've also got some options here to remove duplicated points, or we could resample. So the duplicated points, we can give this a duplication tolerance. So if I'm working in feet, any points within 0.01 feet of each other, uh, we would just remove one of those points just to have a single data point. Um, the other option here for resample, I am actually going to use this one. I'm going to change that to a value of 5. So what that's saying is it's only going to import every fifth data point. So we should be actually cutting this down by a factor of 5. So I'm going to click OK here. It'll take just a second to import that cloud. There it's listed. Let's check the properties of it. So I've cut it down from 27 million to about 5 million. And if I wanted to resample further, I could do that. Now I don't immediately see anything on the screen here. I've just imported it into this project. If I want to visualize it, I'm going to right click on the cloud, click view, and the way we visualize things with the point cloud module is with a variety of scenes. I don't have any scenes created yet, but I'm going to make one. It's a good idea to give these good descriptive names. So I'm just going to call this my resampled cloud. This will be a 3D view. And as far as how I'm going to visualize the cloud, I want to color it according to the elevation. There's a few other options in there. If I had additional uh, data with the points, maybe I had a color tied to each individual point, I could view it that way. But I just want to see these colored by elevation. I'm also a big fan of using this tile windows option. I'll show what that is in just a second if I import it. So I've created the cloud and that tile windows checkbox, that just keeps my project on the left, my main visualization on the right, so it just ensures that these two don't overlap each other. But now I can see my cloud. And there's plenty of commands in here I could do to clean up this cloud. For example, you see I've got a few points down here, probably where I hit a little puddle of water, something like that. I'm not gonna show how we clean those out right now. Um, do those in another video. But right now I'm going to say I'm happy with that cloud, and I just want to create a solid from it. So ways I could do that, I could do that in the scene itself, or I could do that directly from the project. 
If I wanted to do it from the project, I could right click on the cloud and I could say create solid. If I wanted to do it in the scene, I could select the points that I want. I could do just a portion of the points. But for now, I'm going to click select all the points. And I'll go to create and we are going to create a solid. So I'll give this solid a name. I'm just going to call it solid one. And there's four parameters we can mess around with in here to change the way the solid's created. So we have tolerance, precision, range, and tightness. The two that I really try to work with are the tolerance and the tightness. Reason for that is because the program can actually suggest a precision and a range based on the data. So if I click this button here, it scans the data, it gives me some suggested values to use there. I'm going to stick with those. Now the tolerance and the tightness. Tolerance I like to think of as you know how much error are you going to allow. Larger number allows for larger error. I'm going to stick it to a 0.1. We'll try that out. And the tightness kind of controls the resolution of the solid. So if I used a tightness of 2, it's, it's going to be a very low resolution solid. It's not going to not going to match up very well with the cloud. Whereas an 11, it's going to try to follow the points as best as it possibly can. There's a little bit of a compromise. I'm going to try a tightness of 8. Then I'll show another solid where I increase that to an 11 just so you can see how much, um, how much detail we can include in there. I do have all sides of this area surveyed for ceiling sides. I could limit the points there. That's fine if I want to work with that. And I am going to add this to a scene. So once I make the new solid, I do want to visualize it. So here I'll click OK. It'll take just a second to create that solid. And once it does create the solid, it's going to add that to our project. So you can see solid one's now added to the project. But now I've got to visualize it. I could visualize that in a brand new scene. I could make a new one here that doesn't have the cloud included. Or I could append this to an existing scene. That's what I'm going to do. As far as how I'm going to color the solid, I'm going to stick with this position and normal option. So that way it's going to color the solid faces based on the direction that the faces are um, facing. We'll hit the check mark there. There we can see it adds the solid to this scene. It's a little tough to see the way the solid's actually um, in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the size of my points by going to the scene, select the cloud, and I'm going to decrease this point size. All right, a little easier to see the solid itself. And that's not a bad match. This might be a happy medium for working with that tightness variable that we saw. And you can see we're going to have some points that are outside the solid, some that are going to be inside the solid. It really tries to smooth out your data. But just to get an idea of what else we could do with this, I'm actually going to create another solid. I've still got all my points selected. They're still shown in red. So I could just go to create solid. I'm going to make solid number 2, but I'm just going to increase the tightness up to 11 just to see how much detail we could get here. I'm going to click OK. And this is going to take a minute, so I'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back when it's done. So now that that solid has finished, we can once again visualize it. I'm going to add this to the exact same scene we're already looking at. And once again, I probably need to resize my points, turn that down a little bit. And here I'm actually looking at two solids. So I'm looking in the scene, I can see solid one, solid two. Uh, for this one, I'm actually going to turn off solid one. And let's zoom in on our solid here. And we can see we've got a lot more detail. Turn solid one back on, you can see how that's much more smoothed out. It's not following the data as perfectly, which might be what we want. It may not. So you can see how just working with that tightness uh, option really, really changes what the solid looks like.
So at this point, I've got my solids. I can now view those in my CAD window. But before I do that, I'm actually going to create a solid file. Right now, the solids only exist in this project. I don't have an external file I can do much else with. So what I'm going to do is right-click the solid I want to export. And I'm going to say we're going to export this out to an MDL file. I've already got one here. I'm just going to overwrite that solid one. I'll save it. And so now that MDL file has been created. So we've got it saved in a different format we can work with. So I could actually draw this solid to the CAD window straight from the point cloud module. But just to show another option for that, I'm going to minimize my point cloud dialog. I'm going to go into the underground mining module. And from here, I'm going to go to my solid pull down menu. I'm going to click draw solid 3D faces. So here I'll pick the solid itself. And two main options I can work with here. I can pick 3D faces where every face on the solid is rendered as a separate entity. It runs a little bit slower. The other option is to use this solid object. So this is a custom Carlson entity. And that's what I'm going to use because it's going to visualize the solid as just one entity. So that draws it in. I can see the solids in there. And I can just look around at what we've got. See the solids there. And finally, I can just calculate the volume of that solid. So for that, I'll go to my solid pull down, calculate solid volumes. So a couple of options on here. If I had a geologic model in this area, I could actually cut the solid against that model and find out um, you know, what percentage of the solid passed through each individual strata type. For now, I just want to see the raw volume of the solid. Pick the solid again. And there I can see that I have a volume of about 360 cubic meters. So again, this video just shows how we imported that scan, how we cleaned it up slightly, created a solid, and calculated our volume here. There's plenty of other options for working with solids, working with scans. I'll encourage you to check out those options. And as always, these commands are completely documented in the Carlson Help. So you can check that out for additional information. Or if you have any other questions or like to know more, maybe some things we didn't cover in this video, please feel free to contact us at info at carlsonsw.com. Thank you for your time.